are quite good. Attack warnings. Attack warnings. Attack warning. Is it for real? Attack warnings for bloody real. Live from Colorado Springs, the Drop Culture Podcast. I want to confirm, is this an exercise? Roger, copy. This is not an exercise. Come on, quick, get down. Welcome, everybody, to the Drop Culture Podcast. This is that podcast where we pick up that piece of pop culture you forgot about or missed, shine it up real nice, and cram it in your ear holes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dan. I'm Brock. And uh, the conductor. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take you on a train tonight, <laughs> or this morning, or this evening, or afternoon. <laughs> what did I miss? Um, midday. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to take you on a journey. What are we talking about today, Dan? Uh, a 1983 film, Kroll. Not just any film, but Kroll. Kroll. Wow. Okay. How many times do you think you've seen Kroll? Three times. That's it? Yep. Wow. I watched it once when I was a kid, and I watched it twice for this show. Huh. It was not... As a kid, it didn't stand out to me for some reason. It was like a favorite. It, this was it kinda... was no Beastmaster. No, <laughs> <laughs> you know I didn't watch Beastmaster as much as I watched this. Fair. Like I, I, I um, still to this day, but uh, you didn't want two ferrets, right? Right. Yeah. Is wasn't it Beastmaster a Don Coscarelli film too, or some shit like that? I don't remember. Phantasm, dude. Yeah. I don't know. I don't um, but <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> but we'll do a show on it someday. On Phantasm, that would be a good one. Didn't we do Phantasm two for dropping deuces? Yeah, we did part two, yeah. but not part one. Yeah, that's true. Damn, not one, not three, but two. Yes, <laughs> well, they got like four or five. Yeah, yeah I think they got five. I don't or six. care about that. Something like that. I don't care about that <laughs> <laughs> at all. But uh, <laughs> well, we're talking about crawl. We are talking about crawl. fucking crawl, man. That's right. uh, to me, it was one of those movies. It was uh, pretty inaccessible. I don't think they... Um, Maybe that's why I didn't watch it. I didn't see it as much. Yeah. It wasn't really on pay TV. It wasn't really... Uh, uh, whatever you call it. Man, it just wasn't accessible. Where yeah, was I it think at? That's, I think that's it. I it got buried. Right. Yep. you know. And every time I did see it, I was like, man, this rules. But I didn't really understand what was going on until probably about three, four years ago, really. When I watched it again, and was thinking, holy shit, this is like a fucking giant. I don't know. This is huge. <laughs> it really is big. Yeah, yeah. Big sets, big fucking and, and outdoor re- scenes. And for 1983, really well done. Very you know? well done. Good cinematography. Good, yeah. good dialogue. You know, and I'm going to I'm going to gush all over this movie. Not not be not to be that. Oh, it's one of those weird movies. I love it so much. Not like that. Right. Sure. <laughs> but like more like this is a this movie fucking rules. It so, really is a great movie. But I do want to say so, Brock, you've wanted to do this movie for a while. Mm-hmm. It's been on our big board for a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, I have no I had no emotional attachment to this movie at all. I remember seeing it one time. And then never seeing it again. Of course. You know what I mean? Uh, but I will say, there's a lot to gush at on this movie. There are some good good parts of this movie. There are some very interesting things that are done, you know, that are um, technical difficulties. Yeah, sorry Stand about by, that. stand by. My arm fell down. There we go. I saw it, I saw it slowly moving. Ah, okay. <laughs> I saw it because your head was going... Hey, 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 hey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Finish your thought. The there were there were a lot of things that were good things about it. Yeah, there were there were a lot of good things to um, to gush about this movie. Um, specifically, I like just some of the aesthetic ideas. Yes, where yes. I was like, okay, that that's a choice and it's cool. You yes, know what I mean? they rolled different. with everything that's yeah. in there. You know it, ah, uh, and the, and this movie is like Star Wars meets Legend, 
Lord meets of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Meets Dune. Meets Dune. Yes. <laughs> yes. All those things. It's all of those movies yeah. that that only one of or two of those now live in the pantheon of greatest, you know, stories ever told, you know, in sure. on on in book and during the movie, you know. Right. Or three, I guess Dune. <laughs> Cuz the way Dune has their cla- their caste system or whatnot. Right. They have the the princes and the kings and shit like that. So you have that, right? But then this has some weird kind of technology, but it's more magic driven. But then there's like space travel and where what the fuck <laughs> mythical beasts yeah, you know yeah. i mean it's it's incredible in the in the scope of these things but yet they you jump into this movie th- accepting it that's the best part right you know because you you get into it and you're like yeah no this fucking totally works <laughs> i don't even know what i'm watching who the fuck what did that just land you know i mean there's right. a but it's just such a like i don't know if you gave some really big sci-fi nerds a pen and paper and said uh-huh. make the best thing that you can make they'd make something like this you sure know? sure fucking cool you know plus it was the day de- or yeah the debut of a couple of dudes yeah <laughs> and really great actors that i mean the performances in this weren't over the top and i think they've done a um uh what is that riff tracks on it oh really i think so i'm yeah. pretty sure they've done a riff tracks and i'm like uh I'd like to see it, <laughs> but I love this movie. Like right, sure. uh, everything, everything about it. I mean, the the only person that probably doesn't belong would be the main character, Colwyn. <laughs> I like him because he looks like a cross between Chris Pratt and Tom Brady, <laughs> but skinnier. Uh, but like the size of fucking like Tom Brady, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not even that tall. <laughs> He's got tights. He's pretty ripped. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and then he balls like, um, like a like he skinned his knee or some shit during the <laughs> battle. You know, <laughs> my dad is dead. My girlfriend's gone. There's a lot of shit going and on. And that guy's like, shut up, be a king. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you have not become a king on that. <laughs> Either. <laughs> he's fucking one of the best yeah absolutely Yanir is like a great character all the characters so um even the Willy Wonka dude uh the magician that yeah, just yeah. like pops out of nowhere right uh what was his fucking name the magnificent <laughs> yeah short <laughs> short in stature tall in purpose <laughs> fuck it I forgot the rest of it because he's a fucking asshole narrow and something <laughs> and wide in view yeah I don't what he says it like three times and i still don't know it yeah um what was uh uh yeah freddie jones what we could start with the cast so so before we do that what is this really the story about it's um how would you sum it up um so it is a world that has been um invaded by the beast well, that's what they call it. The Beast and the Slayers. Right. It's and the Slayers army. are his army. Yeah. And uh, so these two nations are going to unite underneath the prince and the princess getting married and running it all as one country, basically. Yeah, pretty much. So, so to take the be, guesswork out of right, everything. Right, so there'll yeah. be more defense against, you know, yeah. the Slayers. Because when the Slayers come down, they pretty much they, take over yeah they kill everything but they're they they go from planet to planet yeah. the beast is is direct in this giant space castle yeah yeah that d- d- disappears and reappears somewhere else every 24 hours by right. the way at right. dawn right. <laughs> right um randomly at dawn yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> they land on the planet kroll yes which, which are, this is where the kingdoms were where i was talking about yes yeah yeah and yeah and so then after that, it becomes uh, "I gotta go save the princess." Super Mario, yeah, it's Final a, Fantasy, like every yeah, Zelda, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a Dungeons scene. and Dragon, yeah, it's a Dungeons and Dragon story. Yeah. After that. you gotta get a fellowship, yes, you know, you're the only ones left. You know, they get basically the before they can tie the knot, the kingdom gets attacked and everybody dies pretty much except for the main character Cole, in which he is a prince, but now he's a king. And the princess got taken. Mm-hmm. That he was married. Yeah, yeah. To, I don't know to, if you said that, and if you did, I don't oh know, no, no, yeah. Um, but then, then I they. I want you guys to think she died. She but died yet. there's a magician 
that comes from nowhere. Is he a magician? Well, before that, we get the guy that comes down from the mountain. Yeah, Yanir. And he's like the magician, and right? He, and he like helps. Well, he well he comes down him. because he sees the signs, and then right. he he basically is coming to get the king, so they go take on the beast, right? To win the day, right? But the king's dead. But the king's dead, and it's just Colwyn, right. the prince, which is now the king. Right. You know, so and he had gotten shot and was unconscious. Yeah, but what did he get shot with? Oh, well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, it's yeah. like we're getting really deep yeah. into this. We were, <laughs> but, I thought you just wanted a summary. <laughs> yeah, summary. It's a different planet. Aliens come down. They they're medieval, just like the kingdom is medieval, and they have to go on a road movie. And there's magic and shit. Yeah, and there's magic and fucking giant things. There's Harryhausen. There's Kongs. There's all kinds of fucking crazy shit in it, yeah. and Cyclops. Yeah. And then <laughs> boom, uh, that's what happens. It's it's that journey to get there. It's the yeah. hero's journey there. Yeah. Um. So, who was in this movie? Oh. There's a lot of good people in this movie, <laughs> even though, even though uh-huh. a lot of them really didn't do a lot of shit. Well, before we get into who was in it, let's talk about who directed. Oh, yes. Peter, Peter Yates, Yates, who famously also directed Bullet. Yep. And The Deep. Yeah. One of those, uh, The Deep was one of those uh, underwater, kind of came out or, uh, right before Leviathan and all that shit like that. Yeah. You know, so it was yeah. kind of underwater. Damn. Yeah. It's probably not a movie I was going to watch on purpose. Yeah. I'm like, eh, the water freaks me out. <laughs> yes. I don't want to suffocate. We, we have only seen 5% of <laughs> the water, the bodies of water on this planet. There might be a I'm beast a little freaked there. out. Yeah, there, there might be a beast out Right, there. right. I mean, I'll, I'll go swimming in the ocean and shit, but not <laughs> far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to this movie. Uh, so Peter Yates, yeah, man. So he's a legit director. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. For Bullet. Yeah. I mean, and this was, when did Bullet come out? Uh, Bullet came out in like 68. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this was way into his career. Right. You know, and he took on a fucking completely out of left field um, Dungeons and Dragons story, pretty much. <laughs> yes. It was a quest. that, And they have the, they have the quest. That's true. They 100% do. Well, and you know who wrote this, too? Stanford Sherman. And you know what other movie he wrote? Mm, no. Ice Pirates. Well, there you go. There you go. See? Dun, dun. It's you like can, an uh, Errol Flynn. Out, you can check out the... Uh, oh, yeah, we did it. Yeah, you can check that out in the archives. Nice. Little Ice Pirates. Yeah, I might Little listen to that herbies. one. <laughs> Another crazy movie. So, uh, okay. So, the main person... It's Ken Marshall. He plays Colwyn. And I don't really, I didn't really see anything else that he did. So my notes say, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only thing I could think of. This is it. Um, I think most everything else he did was like he'd done a few movies, you know, but like nothing big. I think he did some TV. He big, and then he did a bunch of TV, I yeah. think. Yeah. Well, and then your... Um, he, but he does not have any Fall Guy credits. That's good. He's probably got a Falcon Crest one in there somewhere. He does have a Baywatch. Ah, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> Baywatch and no Falcon Crest? Damn. Yeah, I know. What a career. <laughs> <laughs> Lizette Anthony is his wife, which is the queen. She the was princess that became the queen when they got married by sharing fire. And her name is Lissa. Yes. Just like her real name is Lizette. <laughs> Lisette Anthony. Huh. There's a lot of Lissas in this movie. And uh Yeah, she does a good job. She's not a weak female character no. either. I like that. Um, especially for nineteen eighty three. Yeah, I read you she know? was dubbed too and she hated it. Oh really? Yeah. So she got dubbed over, and it wasn't her voice, so we don't oh, really know what that is. It's like yeah. watching Mad Max for the first time right. back in the 80s. Well, you know? that didn't stop her from doing Playboy. No, no. Yeah. And uh, Dracula Dead and Loving. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. She was yes. um, one of the vampire chicks, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to tell you right now, don't randomly throw in Google <laughs> with that Anthony Playboy picks, because I was just curious. You know, I'm like, okay, it's old. It's not going to be anything crazy. You know, it was tasteful back then. <laughs> and suddenly I was on 
it was free hard. porn <laughs> sites. <laughs> it, was, it was hardcore time. It was just like. So, yeah. <laughs> so I walk in and I see porn on. The t- I'm like, oh, I better not say anything because that would be embarrassing if you left that on. <laughs> I would be freaking out if it was dude, me. I'd be like, like dude, what no. What is going on? Now my computer's been like corrupted, I'm sure, yes, in some yeah. way. There's, there's fucking chatter bait on it or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, then we go to probably. But if you do find her picture, send it. Yeah, just send it to dropculturepodcast uh, at gmail.com. Yes, yes. Yeah. Then we will be able to see it. Yes, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Okay, so not because we're weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are, but well, you know. <laughs> but okay, so Freddie Jones, yes, he plays Yanir, which is the ancient one, yeah, the or old the dude. or the old one from the Granite Mountains, yeah, right? He's the mountain walker. What I remember him into mm-hmm. with this was the Elephant Man. Yeah, no yeah, shit for sure. Uh, that the role he did in that was cruel, evil, fucking. He just he he exudes a stage actor kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Right. Very very loud. But he was in Firestarter and Wild at Heart. So he did yeah. two Lynch movies. I think he did another one too. Really? Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And, and then you got Francesca Annis, which. <clears throat> with a name like that, you don't really remember it. <laughs> but the only other thing that you've probably seen her in was Dune. Okay. Um, she was... Uh, the original it? Dune? Yes. I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, she, yeah, she was, uh, the, she was the queen. Okay. Uh, the main dude's mother. Okay. You know, that, yeah. 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 Um, and she is the widow of the web on this one. Okay. Which is pretty cool. That's yeah. a great idea, too. And when we get to that, that's awesome. You got Alone Armstrong. He played Torquil. He is one of those background actors that had been in so many fucking movies. But then you see him in this, you're like, I don't even recognize that dude. It's right. like his career took off when he hit 60 and got great. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But he was in um, The Mummy Returns. Okay. Which I'm trying to remember his part. Um, Sleepy Hollow. Okay. Braveheart. I don't remember yeah. him in Braveheart. There's a lot of dudes in Braveheart. Yeah, there was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy was another famous um, stage actor. Yeah. So yeah. he was really all over the stage. Um, then you got David Batley. He was Ergo. Ergo yeah. was the the short in stature, you know, magician kind of dude, hill people magic. Yeah, the magnificent. <laughs> he was like a uh-huh. he was a he was a hillbilly magician. <laughs> <laughs> His magic only worked on himself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weird. But you might remember him from a little role in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's right. He was the chocolate man. <laughs> <laughs> so um then you got Bernard Breslaw, right? He is the one that donned the single eyeball for the Cyclops. Okay. Um, and the Cyclops name is Rel. I thought he looked an awful lot like an older Rucker Hauer. Kind of. Yeah, he almost had that look, yeah, you yeah. know. Except for just well, if he had the same haircut from Lady Hawk. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, he <laughs> he did a series of movies, I guess, that were entirely like they're like police academy movies, I guess. Okay. Um, called Carry On Movies. They're Carry On, you know, My Wayward Soldier, Carry On Morocco. Okay. Shit like that, you know what I mean? And he was always a big dumb dude, of course. Dude was like seven foot tall. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he was a wrestler. Um, And then you got Liam Neeson. Yeah. The one that is good at so many different things, or one specific thing, and mm-hmm. the uh, one specific thing he's not good at always happens to him. That's true. And that's taking care of his family. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a big motherfucker in this, too. Wow, well, dude's really tall. He's like 6'4", too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like he's that. a big guy. and But he just looks, in this, he looks... He's big, too. He's not, yeah, he's not brutish, right. but yet he looks like he could whoop the shit out of anybody. You sure. know what I mean? He's got a particular set of skills. Yeah, and one's not taking care of his family. No, no. <laughs> kicking ass dude come on <laughs> and then if then he would have pulled some Krav Maga in that come on <laughs> <laughs> something shit sure. then you got um, John Welsh which he is the seer the emerald yeah, seer yeah. which I thought that was a fucking cool character man absolutely just a ancient dude living in the fucking side of a mountain the you know cave right oh, this is fucking badass right 
Then you got uh, Graham McGrath. He was Titch, and Titch is the young boy. Right. Right? That the candy man actually steals candy from. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fucking weird. Um, Tony Church was uh, Turold. Never really remember what he was in. Bernard Archard was Erig. He was on the Day of the Jackal. Belinda Maine was Vela. She was uh, one of Liam Neeson's wives, I think, or that was, something like that. Yeah, that was the wife. She was in Wonder Woman 84. What? Yep. Because <laughs> there was only one other female, and that was the demon girl. Yeah, the one that was taken yeah, over by I the beast. I don't remember her name, but I think that, maybe that must have been Liam Neeson's hmm? wife. Yeah, it might have been. One of his many. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's on the road a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that's yeah, how they like, justify it. He's like 14 ways. <laughs> hmm. They're all good from every part of the country. <laughs> um and then okay so we got Dickon Ashworth he was Bardolph he was the last guy to die out of the party okay um that got spiked in the in the stomach and uh then you got oh he was on Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were Rabbit <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Tom Tom Cardi he was Oswin he he was in Spam a lot the musical. Don't worry about it. Yeah, there's probably rusty nails on this floor. <laughs> awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then another person that has been in a lot of fucking movies and still a pretty prolific actor of his time. I first movie I ever saw him in was Nuns on the Run with Eric okay. Idle. Okay. Fucking great movie. Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. <laughs> 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 and he was on. His his character's name was Rune. He was on Flash Gordon, European Vacation. Yeah. Um, and then I put nuns on the run. Uh, Claire McIntyre. She was Merith, which she was on a fish called Wanda. And then Bronco McLaughlin. Of the he clan was McLaughlin. <laughs> of the clan <laughs> McLaughlin. Um, he's the one that drowned in the uh, the sand. Yeah, yeah, hey. He was a Ninog. Um, but he's basically the unknown stuntman in real life. Okay. No shit. He's, he's done. The he, uh, well, no, he was the guy that was um, drowning. Remember? Yeah. No. And he threw the deal. He he had hair. You said the unknown stuntman. I oh yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's why I put the unknown uh, stuntman on there because he did stunts for almost every major movie that you could think of. Nice. So he was probably a big time stunt coordinator too. But I just saw stunts, stunts, stunts. I was like, oh well, okay. But that was your cast. So I'll tell you. Obviously, like maybe not in 1983, because like I didn't know who a lot of actors were in 1983. <laughs> I knew two, but I think even at that time, like some of the actors, you'd be like, eh, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like now, you can look back and be like, well, there were some couple decent actors in this, right? They all were good actors. Every one of them in the movie. Was. I thought they did well. And I'm saying that I'm just saying. That. Yes, I'm thinking yeah. of name draw, like to. But yeah, but yeah, no name draw. Yeah, because at the end of the day, this movie loses money. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think. What was what was the budget? The budget for this one, I just had it up. Well, you're you're right. I I think the acting was really good, and you had really good um, characters. And again, you have to you're thrown in it to believe it. Right. Uh, the budget was twenty seven point three million dollars, and uh, the box office was eighteen point nine. Oh. Damn, they didn't. They still haven't made their money back on uh, rentals. <laughs> 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 well, I, I mean, I Star Wars was it. Yeah, sure. In the eighties, and Jedi came out in eighty three, right? right? Right. Okay. Fucking anything else that came out that that year. Yeah, you're. Pfft, there's a, a shitload of great movies, but Jedi just wipes everything clean. For sure, you know? for sure. And in this one, being uh, a complete fantasy, badass movie like that, it was. It's very hard to, for a lot of people, to just jump into a world like that without being like, "What the fuck?" Well, and I, I was very interested when watching this, like where it was filmed, <clears throat> because the sets were amazing. Fuck yeah, the they most, were huge. There's one part where I was like, oh, those are big, giant, white balloons. Okay. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah. other than that, um, like it was filmed very, very well. The special effects were 1983 special effects. You know what I mean? They weren't bad, though. They, they were they were what they were. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Um, but there were some stunning shots that they did. Uh, the cinematography was very good. Yeah. And good uh, wide shots they actu- outdoors. They actually filmed this on 23 stages in the double Pinewood studios, yeah. which is yeah. The home of 007. Um, so that, you know, there's a lot of, and a lot of people that were in, in this movie or around this movie were, you know, film people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and, and, and just everything, everybody involved with it. This is to be on paper. It's gotta be fucking fantastic. Right. You know, I think if you've never seen the, anything like, like that. Like, here's what I think. I think even in 1983, had they cast two bigger names in the princess and queen prince king role okay i think they probably would have done well not well well not like indiana jones well you know what i mean but like it would have done it would have propelled the movie into because if there's an actor or an actress that you like okay you're gonna be like oh well i trust them like all their movies i like all their movies so i'm gonna go see this right 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 you know what i mean um so make ryan i I don't know 1983 i'm just throwing a name out you know what i mean when did clash of the titans come out uh like 1981 i think okay i think this kind of suffers from the same thing because if you think about it it's but there it's more familiar because it's greek mythology instead of something completely brand new right but you still had you had some great actors in it. Huge. It's 1981. Yeah, huge, big actors, right? Yeah. But the main character, you're like, oh. Uh, Harry Hamlin. Yeah, Harry uh. Hamlin. Hmm. Great. <laughs> uh, still to this day on the fucking TV show that Lisa Rin is on, she, she refers to her husband as Harry Hamlin. She's like, oh, yeah, that my husband, Harry Hamlin. You're like, mother son of a bitch. <laughs> you don't have to say his full name. Mm. But no, no, no. It, it, but that's kind of in the league that I think this movie is. If you compare yeah, sure. movies on that, I could see that. Because, yeah, you had Burgess Meredith, Sir Lawrence Olivier. Oh, God. Good God. Mm-hmm. Everybody was in there. The the fucking the hairy Italian beast dude. So I, I think for, you know, <laughs> that the, makes me bu- like... the budget that they had, yeah, they did very well. Especially for the filming. Like I said. God, it's great. Special effects could have been better even for 1983. Yeah. Um, but not maybe not with that budget, probably. You know what I mean? I totally understand that. Well, for what it was, though, they really they used what they had in a good way. Sure, sure. Um, with the backwards uh, filming, they, they cut a lot of corners, but yet it was so weird that it made sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you're like, oh, OK, OK. I see why that that looks weird. And you start noticing little things that they did with that. And also, like you said, the outdoor sets. Jesus yeah. Christ. Where were they at with those mountains? Beautiful, <laughs> man. Absolutely. I, I would have been like the Yanir dude and just sat there and fucking, you know, smoked a joint pipe or something, <laughs> man. Just looked at the fucking mountains over there. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's <was> great. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I thought everything really, the story was really good, too. I don't think it. As far as rushed, the whole movie was rushed from the beginning. If sure, you think about it, sure. Um, if you look at it that way, but once you're in there, you really you have to pay attention, which I think is a really cool part about some movies. You have to pay attention to really understand where they're going. And when you're a little kid, you're like, "Oh, this is weird, <laughs> <laughs> right? Hmm, where's Luke Skywalker? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like one of those. But it was, sure. it still stood apart to me as a kid. Just because it was so fucking weird and cool. Sure, You're absolutely. like, whoa, there's rules. And, but I never really got to watch it that much, you know, <laughs> until I got older. And it's like, I'm watching this fucking every day. <laughs> but so now we can talk about what happened in the movie. Okay. Very simply. We don't have to go through it scene by scene on this. Oh, no. But it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it is. It's a... <laughs> well... Yeah, they show they so just starting out with the big score and the big giant fucking everything, right? Um, you see a ship. What is it? A rock? A rock ship? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. It's it's inorganic material. Well, we know later. Yes, because the narrator Yanir comes on and says that the beast comes down and destroys countless worlds with his slayers, and that's where you know they show the big ship land, right? But then if you look down at the bottom where the fire is, it's all backwards. 
Yeah. And it just looks fucking weird. And, it, and at first you're like, huh. But they did that like on purpose, I think, to make it look kind of weird because they use that same scene again yeah. when Lissa gets taken in there. But so they don't really go into too much detail. They show some burning cities. You know, we know that there's a, some sort of a war with these slayers killing everybody. And then we're in the castle. Yeah. <laughs> we're just there. Of the kingdom. Yeah. And um, she's explaining to the dude, what is it? Or her father. Her dad, yeah. Yeah. So they, they've they sent people out to help, but everybody's getting killed. Home dude shows up because she's like, I, I want to marry this dude. And he's like, I don't want you to marry that that chick because it's fucking so-and-so's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So-and-so's daughter. I don't like him. Yeah. Why him? But she does it in a way that she unifies everything. Right. But we know that there's an ancient prophecy that says a woman with ancient name. Which she has. We come to find out. We come to find out. Will rule the galaxy or rule the rule the planet. And then their son will rule the galaxy. Yeah. So that's that's basically the crux of the whole story. Right. We got to get to that. Right. Um, we got to preface it with that because <laughs> we're going to come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> they get into a fucking palace fight. Yeah, so they're getting married. They're getting hooked up. And they do it through a weird fire ritual where she makes fire. Or no, he has fire. He puts it in the water. Yeah, and he it puts goes it out. And then she picks the fire up out of the water. It wasn't there. And then hands it back to him. Well, it's it's <laughs> like he gives fire with a tiki torch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on some fucking water, right? So it just goes out. But the only person that could take the fire from the water is the woman that he chooses to marry. Right. Which is the only one, if it's true, because if he was lying, she couldn't take it. Right. So she reaches in there, grabs a fire. They all start dancing and shit. You know, right. it's like blah, 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 blah. He's about to take the fucking fire back, right? Yes. Because the only person that could take the fire from her is him. Right. The one, the, the one person. That she chooses. Yes, the one that she chooses. So they're all like, their costumes were a little bit weird in there, too. Because yeah, it it's very angular. It almost kind of looks like a Dracula. Um, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Okay, how that suit kind of looked flat, crimson guardish type yeah, shit. Sure, they all have swords, so it's a little, little different. Well, the bad guys break in. <laughs> yeah, they start shooting. The Slayers come. They pretty much wipe everybody out. But what are they firing? Their what? guns are fucking cool, right? So these these Slayer dudes, they have these really big, huge Dracula collars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. And they they bust in. They break down the door first but they have these sticks that they shoot with and then they can turn them around and they can hit with them yeah they're weird there's one there's one scene when they're pointing it and i know i really noticed that there was like looked like there was something loaded in mm -hmm. but then they do multiple shots too so i don't know how that works if it's self-loading of these things they don't really show the mechanics of it so much if they don't really give you any background on right. what they are either but the prince dude gets shot in the shoulder. We see one of them goes die. through and out the back. Yeah. Out the back. And then he fucking rolls down the yeah. stairs, but not before he does his best Errol Flynn. Yes, yes, he does. <laughs> I mean, definitely heavy, heavy. Um, and I think there was even something where that said the director. Swashbuckler. Was like really inspired by Errol Flynn. Films it makes sense in like that first that, part. Like that, yeah. So the first the first part really does kind of um, lend to that old swashbuckling era, you know, hanging from the chandelier type shit. Which is kind of how Ice Pirates was. So. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. He even it started out that yeah. way. Too. <laughs> he even like Peter Yates. <laughs> he jumps over like some deal and then like switches hands in midair and then fucking cut something. And then, yeah, he gets shot, but they kill one of the Slayers, but the Slayers disintegrate. And then the little thing climbs out of them. Yeah, and it's like a fucking detached testicle that goes into the fucking ground or some shit. And over... <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good impression. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking weird. And it goes into straight marble. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't which, even matter. Yeah. It doesn't it, matter what it goes into. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, hey, you need to take the queen out of here. Do you love me? They shouldn't have split up. Right. That's really, if we come to find out, if they yeah. just would have stayed together, everything would have been cool. Yeah. <laughs> pretty true, much. True, pretty true, much. Yeah. So the beast is basically after her. Yeah. Um, so she they gets, kidnap her. Yes. And then you near the old man, the ancient one, is there and puts some like fucking Play-Doh on the dude's arm. Yeah, on the prince's arm. Because everybody else is dead. 
And so he's like, you're, yeah, and he's, like, crying about it. <laughs> and then they yeah. took my wife. And <laughs> uh, he's crying. And dude's like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, you're a king. You're a king now. God damn it. I'll put you in a sideshow. <laughs> Let's go, bitch. <laughs> yeah. We have to get the glaive. That's the first time we yeah, hear about that. the first that. time we hear about the glaive. What the fuck is the glaive, right? So, in basically, it's the, the necklace that he has on that hangs down to his belly button, right? <laughs> But it's not his necklace. But it's his, it's the king's necklace. The king's necklace. Yeah. The, it, so whoever rules that kingdom is the one that wears that. Yanir yeah, gave yeah, it to yeah, him. Yeah. And so there, he's like, you got to go. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you got to go get this motherfucker um, to take on the beast. And then we'll worry about everything later. Right. He's like, okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's why I came, to find yeah. the king. And let's go. Let's go. It. It's time. Yeah. It's time for me to step in. God knows where he's been, right? Up on the mountain. <laughs> yeah. Doing what? Whacking it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking a lot of weed. <laughs> so, <laughs> getting to know people, you know? Uh, <laughs> his neighbors. <laughs> so, so they they take out on horseback, right? And he's like, okay, um, we're at, you know, the bottom of this mountain that you're going to have to climb up. Because <laughs> yeah. if you don't make it, you ain't coming back. Yeah. You know, um, and so that's where he's got to go. There's a hole in the side of a mountain. Like, pfft, which one? Right. Right. <laughs> so home dude fucking scales goddamn the Grand Tetons, right? <laughs> to get to this fucking cave that looks like uh, it kind of resembles a little bit of uh, shit. Man, the way the way they show him climbing on that deal, you can tell it's really him climbing. Right. And he the way he walks on the marble or weird shit like that, and then he kind of gets in to that deal to get the glaive, which we don't even know if he knows where he's going. Okay. Does he get the glaive before he meets the magnificent guy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. I couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's directly after. That's so right, right after yeah, the yeah, first part. You're right. So, so basically, he gets in there, and it's a glowing chamber. Yeah, but is it lava, and or is it you just don't know? Ooze? You don't know. It's like the pink slime from Ghostbusters. But there was 2. like it sounded hot. Yeah, well, and there was running water. Yeah, like water flowing into it. So he reaches his hand down, kind of, and it's in a weird way because he's not careful reaching into lava, no. which could be he doesn't even spit at it. You know, and be like, <laughs> let me see if this There's fucking no, thing no is no hot. temperature gauge. Yeah, here. <laughs> yeah. And so, tss, I don't know. <laughs> so he reaches his hand in there, but yet he keeps his face the way he reaches for it. Yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, he's like stretching, yeah. which he should have just stepped in it and just grabbed it, right? <laughs> so he grabs this thing, and what is it? It's the glaive. It's right. a five pointed boomerang. <laughs> It's a knife boomerang. Yeah. That's one of the best special effects is when the blades appear. <laughs> yes. just, it doesn't like mechanize. It's not like they just pop out. No. No. They just appear. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like if your hand had claws. <laughs> so he comes out of the fucking cave yeah. all like, I, I don't know. He's, he's high on life at that point. Cause he Absolutely. got the fucking ancient weapon that he didn't even believe was there to begin with. No, he thought it was bullshit. And he, he's about to throw it like a little kid, like, hey, check this out, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. No. And then the dude's like, no, stop. Don't throw it. Only you'll know when to use it. So he's like, well, you got to take me to the fucking, you know, the dark tower, you know, uh, and then I'll fucking be able to use it. Let's go. The Black Fortress or, yeah, or something. Yeah. Black so, Fortress. Yeah. Dark and cause, Tower or something. Yeah. Well, well, before they left, too, he says something about, like, we need an army to fight these people. He's like, I'll find dudes on the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Which he does. Yes. Which, you know, coming up. <laughs> that's almost what happens, right? So they, he's got the glaive, right? They're stopping by a pool of water somewhere. Yeah. Doesn't he, isn't he doing something with his shoulder again? Yeah. He, he pulls the, uh, the Play-Doh bandage off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it's better. It's all better. Yeah. It's like he has this salve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here, put the salve on. <laughs> what? Who has salve anymore? <laughs> so they're sitting by this pool and this fucking uh, bottle rocket comes by. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lands in, the, it lands in the pond and it's the uh, Ergo the Magnificent. Yes. Um, and so Ergo's like, oh, I'm a fucking badass, but I love gooseberry pies. <laughs> love them. He says that so many goddamn times. <laughs> He's like, it was an unfortunate accident over a gooseberry pie. <laughs> well, I mean, he did 
steal somebody's pie. Right, right. So they show him do some magic, and he fucking turns himself into a goose. And then we find out that he can only use the magic against himself. That's Pretty what the much. old man says. Yeah, he, yeah. Well, he says um, they, they can't do harm to anybody yeah, yeah. else but themselves. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll show you about that, man, <laughs> old man. And so after that, what is it? That's They're, when we run into the bandits, right? Well, before that, we oh, get to see the that. first glimpse of the Cyclops because they're oh, about to separate right. their own way, right? That's right. And Colvin's like, yo, why don't you come with us? And he's like, nah, I ain't going anywhere with you motherfuckers. That's right. And then he walks into the woods. <laughs> yeah, and there's the fucking Cyclops with his trident. <laughs> just fucking like, hey. <laughs> and so he just turns around. He's like, let's go. <laughs> I want to stay alive. <laughs> so then there, he's bitching, of course. He's the comedy relief. So he's right. bitching about the terrain they're taking. They go into this rocky outcropping or it, fucking cave type deal in the mountains, right? Mm. And they're bandits. That is one of the baddest fucking introductions. <laughs> Whenever they come out, Liam Neeson is on one side. The Torquil dude is on the mm. other. And they got fucking giant axes. <laughs> and they... And, when you see like the dude that does it the over the head, okay, that's yeah, this act. But it looks like Liam Neeson could launch a fucking axe like that in real life. Yeah, like, you I have to. I think he could just swing it and go through you. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so it, you can see it like he throws it as hard as he fucking can. Like it, he's like, I'm gonna be a movie star. <laughs> Watch this shit. But yet they they clang together, and, and that's they, how Dark Man came. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he was fucking. That yeah, was that's the sure. wicked part. You're like, holy shit, that well, dude's they were, badass. And they were even smart. Like they were like, you're surrounded by 300 troops, you yeah. know. And they're like, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Colwyn is like, yeah. what does he say? That's uh, 92 few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 100 too few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> so he comes out of the deal, yeah. and then you got those dudes cracking the whips. <laughs> like, what the fuck, right? They're like, whoop, shoo, shoo, whoop, shoo, whoop, shoo. They love those whips yes. and that sound effect. Even even <laughs> whenever he's like introducing the boys, he's like, these are the boys and the whipsters. <laughs> like totally fucking perfect, right? Um, so we come to find out they're cons, right? Yeah, they yeah. escape jail, blah, 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 because they all got chains on all right. over them. Um, and he's looking for an army. He's like, you know what? I'd take 10 of you guys. Because guess what? You Nothing could fight like, lose. yeah, you could fight like a hundred. Yeah. And Yanir, um, basically, basically he enlists the Spartans. Yeah. The thieves. And so he has inside his necklace the key to their thing, their uh, shackles. So he frees the one kid that steps up right away. Yeah, because one kid's like, I'll go with you. I'm I don't got no you, kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck so it, let's go. He takes those off and he throws them to the main guy. What's his name? Torquil. Yeah. Torquil. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> and he's like, no, I want to leave him on. If, if we're successful in this mission, I'll take him off. I'll take him yeah. off. Because yeah. he has to like talk him into him. He has to give him a little rousing speech. A little yeah. Bit, you know? And Yanir is basically like. He had to uh, give him the Kevin Costner, I'm taking over the band of merry men speech <laughs> yeah and, and yanir is like hey you got sons you want to leave them a fucking piece of shit slavery yeah, right i was like uh no how did you know i got sons i guessed motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know so i am your king <laughs> yes <laughs> so so of course you know they they get they get going again um he's like well boys we're now an army you know and then robbie coltrane's like an army that doesn't get paid. Yeah. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, right? He has some of the best lines in the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, he did. It was good. Because basically, the, the next places they got to go after they get these guys is the Emerald Seer. Because the yes. Emerald Seer is going to be able to find out where the Black Fortress is going to appear uh, next. Yes. Yeah. The next morning. Right. Because so, every 24 hours, boom, it just disappears and reappears somewhere else on the planet. Right. It's just out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. At so, dawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it could be in the mountains. It could yeah. be in the ocean. Yeah. They even matter. say that shit. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, um, they're all the, the merry men are riding, right? And, of course, they come uh, upon a gooseberry bush. Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> and fucking Ergo has got to be like, gooseberry? This is fucking the shit that gets me hard. You know what I mean? It's fucking, it's like too much. Yeah, yeah. We get it. Yeah, he really you're, loves them. You're fucking obsessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good thing <laughs> and, he was, though. Yes. And then, he of course. He saw a slayer. And then the slayer's like standing in the bushes. Yes. You know, like about to fire, and then the fucking Cyclops comes out of nowhere. That's right. Like a fucking badass with a trident. That trident is the shit. Puts it right through the dude. 
Uh, and and he disintegrates into nuffs. <laughs> He's like, he goes into the ground, right? Yeah. They come back for him, and they're like, I saw a Cyclops, and he's like, he, he was going to kill me. He's like, if you if he was going to kill you, you would be dead. Yeah, yeah. So he's still, the oh, Cyclops is just following him. Right. So then we get to find out why the Cyclops is the way they are. Right. Which is the only kind of backstory that we get in the whole deal to That's explain true. him. Mm-hmm. And it's basically the Cyclops were a race that had two eyes at one point. But um, they were stiffed on a deal from uh, the fucking beast. Yeah, um, they, they traded their eye for... To see the future. To be able to see the future. But they can only see their own death. Right, so they're a sad lot. Yeah, so they are they're they basically just like stick to the fringes. Yeah. And uh, this one is... Uh, he's actually pretty fucking badass, yeah, right? Yeah, he's, he's super cool, man. Yeah, Rel. You know, he's always like nice and proper and shit. But he doesn't join the Mary band of people yet no he so just follows like a stalker yeah he's just kind of he's protecting like the him. wolverine of the x-men yeah, yeah yeah but with a trident yeah <laughs> who, who else who else is bad enough to have a fucking trident Aquaman. see <laughs> but like i think rel would kick his ass probably yeah. unless they were in the water yeah <laughs> what, what does aquaman eat anyway does he eat fish he probably just uh the brill, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the krill. The krill yeah. oh, he sucks them into his lungs. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> 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 but no. So, of course, they're going to see the Emerald Seer. We don't even know who the fuck that is yet. Yeah, no. And um, so they get to the side of a mountain. In, uh, another one. Yeah, right? yeah. They're in the mountain. And he's like, "Okay, so." follow me us three are gonna go you three or you guys stay and he's like no i'm going with you i ain't staying around with these fucking thieves right Right. so they go into the side of a mountain that just opens up because yanir walks up and knocks like hello (laughs) (laughs) he speaks the word for friend in elvish you know what i mean as as he does he's the old man up on the mountain (laughs) yeah so they come in and there's a little kid and a fucking ancient old dude right yeah and he's the one that's going to tell him so they go into this whole deal where he knows him, they they start this emerald spinning. He's using the emerald to see where it's going to be in the future. Right. But the beast reaches through the motherfucker. And slaps him around a little bit. Yeah, and <laughs> fucking grabs the, the emerald and is like, pow, yeah. blows it up. And then they're all like fucking windblown, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's it. <laughs> and Meanwhile, that, Torig or whatever his name is. Torquil? Yeah. yeah whatever. Um, <laughs> Nyquil. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He steals a piece of an emerald, which I thought, well, you're a thief. That works well, out. why not? Yeah. It's a fringe benefit. Yeah. Come on. No, absolutely. How are you going to pay for shit? Like D&D. Like, yeah. They're right. always stealing shit. You gotta Every grab video something. game you've ever played. I think it would have Like going and rob people's houses and <laughs> shit. You know, you're like, oh, check that drawer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have asked, though. Yeah, you know. You know. Been like, hey, um, for the boys and me, can, mm-hmm. can I have some of these emeralds, please? <laughs> cool. Thanks. <laughs> So, so the little kid is Titch. Yeah. He's the one that I guess watches the old man. Yes, I wonder he's if like they, his ward. Yeah, I wonder. He's it, like I, or the other way around. Yeah, I guess he's going to take over his spot yeah, afterwards. It seems that way. Yeah, he's like his apprentice Definitely or something. Seems like that. Well, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not weird. Right. Um, so basically, they're they're leaving, and they're like, "You got to come with us." Um, he's like, "Well, I can't see." <laughs> well, no well yeah, they have. Because of that, so they had to go to some specific spot. They go to the swamp, right? And there's a special there's a special tree that grew, three trees grew into one. Yes, and that's like a holy spot or pa- that, spot of power. And that's the only place that he's going to be able and to then see. He can't stop him from yeah. seeing where this. He's protected be. in there. Yeah, yeah, he's like even better protected. That's right. Um, so we get into this swamp deal and that's when Torquil pulls out the rocks and yeah, he's like, so he goes to pull the emeralds out and show his, or he hands the bag to his buddy. Was it Liam Neeson? Yeah. Yeah. And he pulls <laughs> them out and they're just rocks. Yeah. They make fun of him too. They, they do make fun of him. And then it goes back to the seer and the seer just smiles a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. not overly, not cheesy or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but just more know, like, yeah, you know, I, I, gotcha. he saw gotcha. everything anyway. Yeah. It was like, he wasn't going to get away with it. Yeah, I'll tell you what he didn't see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's coming up. They they round a couple corners around a couple bins and everything, and then all of a sudden the uh, slayers come out of the fucking quicksand. Yeah. Mud shit. Mud right? shit. So they're firing on them. Um, I 
Ergo is the one that warns everybody. He basically yeah. saved everybody's life at that yeah. point. Yeah. Plus, he saves the the little kid yeah. after he took a half of more or like a third of a cinnamon bar away from him. Yeah, what you know, I dick. know. He's like, thanks, share and share alike, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> after he breaks him off, of, the kid breaks him off a piece, and he just grabs the whole rest of it, like <laughs> yes. the big portion. After he makes fun of him because he's a kid without any candy. Yeah. And then he also says his name sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so Titch, uh, it's uh, it's it's not good, but it's adequate. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so they're all they're all fighting these dudes, but none of the actual bandits get killed. No. They whip the shit out those motherfuckers, yeah, right? They do. But in the meantime, the seer's been sitting on some fucking bench somewhere, mm-hmm. you know. Collecting unemployment, <laughs> I'm fucking not then, seeing. Yeah, and, and then yeah, yes, you didn't see that shit coming. No, no. And then the fucking they they basically, uh, what he was a shapeshifter is the the, the changeling, the changeling. Yeah. yeah, and his his fingernails grow and he starts choking him. Yeah, so he looks just like him. Yeah, and it's terrifying too it to takes see that his spot. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, um, who comes back? Yanir comes back, picks him up, and it's like, come, come on, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and then Colwyn's like, uh, okay, I'll lead you, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and, and then as they get closer to this area, <laughs> yes. he's like, no, only the the one asking the question, yeah, can go, can, can lead me. But we we left out the most important introduction in that whole scene. Who? So when the Slayers came, right? Uh-huh. They were pretty much outnumbering the the other guys. Guess who shows up out of the fucking blue? Rel. Oh, yeah, Rel. And he ends up killing like six of them yeah, on his own. Because he's Rel. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the superhuman of this. Fucking badass, yeah, yeah. you know? I mean, and he just fucking... And then uh, uh, Ergo's like, hey, my name's Ergo. And he's like, the Magnificent. <laughs> he's like, oh, why do you got to be an asshole? <laughs> you know? And he's like, no, I'm I'm your uh, friend or some shit like that. Says your actions... I yeah. saw you save the boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he, he has that one cryptic line, too, as they're walking. Um, he's like, what would you wish for? He asks the little kid. Ergo does, right? And the little kid's like, I just want a puppy. Why wouldn't you want, like, a... That's a foolish wish, you know? Why wouldn't you want, like, a litter of puppies? He's like, no, I just want one. Okay. He's like, uh, Rail, what would you like? And he's like, ignorance. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Well, we don't know yet. Yeah, well, I get it. it um, it basically, he's 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 saying he wished he was ignorant on his own death. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? of course You're yeah. like, oh, okay. Yep, that's a good wish, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, of course, we don't know that the uh, changeling has taken over the Emerald Seer. Right. Until his hand changes. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that's how they do it. <laughs> see, somebody had to stay behind. Right. Rail stood behind too. Right, that's so, right. That's right. Rail and they, they get to the trees, right? They grow into one, and because um, Torquil has him now, he's like, yeah, "I'll yeah. leave this here. You go ahead with Titch, right?" Right. So they're up at the front, and he's like, "Only the person that seeks the knowledge may go with me." Right. So that's his way of getting him alone. Right. So he kind of gets in there, and then all of a sudden, he fucking starts choking him. Yeah, with the hand. He got the, the demon hand. Yeah, right. right? They're, they they're, all get the demon hand, just yeah. so you know. When we're talking about somebody choking somebody, it's with the demon it's hand. It's a demon hand. <laughs> and so Colwyn's like almost there, and then Rail comes out of fucking nowhere again, yeah. running full speed like a like the stallion that he is, right? <laughs> Throws a trident into his back, and he fucking melts. Yeah, yeah. And then his whole fucking everything that's left over goes into the fucking hole, which is crazy looking. Yeah. It makes the craziest sounds, too. So Rail's like, nah, you know what? Guess what? Because he, he's like, how did you know? And he's like, well, the, uh, the swamp gave him back. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> that's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and there, well... You know, it, we the the part where the dude drowns, right? Because they walk into some quicksand and everybody starts falling down. And the one thing that I always I always notice is Yanir doesn't lend him the extra body hand. You know what I mean? Right. Because the Cyclops is on the other side. He's the anchor, right? Because right? they all pull everybody out. Then they all go back in to go get Ninog, Ninog yeah, right. or something like that, yeah. right? So they're reaching out, and it's basically one person away from him. Colwyn has him. If they just had one more body, but yet fucking Yanir standing over like, yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> He's like supervising, you know what I mean? You're like, what the fuck, right? He's so, old. <laughs> so, of course, now the Talk Seer's... you when you're that old, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so now the Seer's dead. Right. Um, and they're like, well, now we're fucked. 
It's like, nah, I think we got another deal. And that's when the, the acting comes out yes. <laughs> of uh, Yanir. He's like, you can see him in deep thought. And he's like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have an option. <laughs> yes, I can do this. You know, I, I need to talk to the widow of the web. And he's They're like, all like, that's death. <laughs> you can't do that. Nobody's ever he come just, back. He just says a good line there, too. And the guy's like, you know, her name is death. And he goes, power and death are... What's he say? One in the same or something like that, or something similar. very similar, very close or something. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because Robbie Coltrane has that really good line too. He says, um, "What is it? Rocks in our pockets and stones above our heads and gravestones above our heads on this journey." Yeah, yeah. you're like, oh shit, that was a fucking really thought out well line. You know, I was like, oh okay, that's all that you're gonna get there. So he he basically has to go there. So he kind of drops them off wherever. Yeah, you know? we don't. Yeah, <laughs> another mountain. Yeah. Uh, so he goes to um, the uh, Widow of the Web, which fucking crazy setup. Because how does a how does a spider? They feel the vibration, right? But would it make a sound? Mm, probably not. Probably but, I mean, not. I think but that's, that's so what they cool. Were trying to yeah. Make. They're giving you that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. it is just crinkly. Like it's the sound, like for them, I think that's them projecting the vibration doing that, you know. Which and takes... apparently there was a spider they worked on for two weeks and then went with what they had. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like the white spider. Yeah, it looks fun. It's fucking yeah, weird. Cool. Menacing. Yeah. You know, uh, it, like I said, it was like a King Kong effect pretty but, much. But he's got to get to... He's got to get to the, of the web, which yes. is like she's in the center of the web in this like golden bubble. Yeah. And um, it's like an egg sack. Yeah. With a bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. As you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the. Um, the spider is coming after him and then he says her name, the lady's name. Yep. Because he says earlier that like I know he she may not be deaf for me because I know her true name. I know her real name. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he gets. She basically turns. What does she? She, she turns, turns over an hourglass and says, "You have this much time to get yeah. here, basically." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> he's, the spiders coming. Yeah, I can give you this much time. Yeah, and so he he gets over there and he's like, "Hey, what up, hey, baby? It's uh, been a <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> it's been uh, about a uh, eighty years. Uh, can I you buy know? you a fifty? <laughs> <laughs> A bottle of Cravatier, come back to the egg sack and knock boot. What do you think? <laughs> Can I buy you a fifth sandwich? <laughs> so, so we learn throughout that that Yanir and her were once a thing. Yes, they were married, right? Yeah, that's why I guess why yeah. she's the widow. Of, I don't know. Well, come to find out, she was pregnant and had his kid and then killed his kid. Yeah, that's savage, man. Yeah, yeah. That's a fucking crazy thing, And that's thing why too. she's damned to that spot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. that's a pretty weird, yeah. cool story. You yeah, know? it's a fucking unusual. But he and forgives her instantly. Yeah, he's like, I've already forgiven you. Right, you myself know? I can't forgive. Yes, you know? for, for leaving, basically. Right. So, yeah, I mean, he took the new, he's just like, oh. you know, that's, a, that's another good thing spot for freddie jones i mean he does a really good job in that role you for know sure. he's the mentor obi-wan kenobi type dude you know yeah. but a little bit more depth yeah in a, in a weird way so she basically he's like hey can you help me get out of here <laughs> she's like no i can only turn this over once yeah. so she breaks it and the only way for him to get out is she has to give him the sand right so and once you take spill it all yeah once so. you take possession of the sand that's your life is what I'm right. thinking. So she was given possession of the sand in that hourglass and had to stay there. Right. Right. So his fate could have been there too. She could have died. Right. right. Um, but she pours it all into his hands and she says, your life will run out when the sand runs out, just like her. Right. So she had to die, died whenever he left. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, think that was the assumption. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, She's not protected anymore, but he's protected with the sand. He gets across, right? He's running down the deal because he talks her into finding where the Black Fortress is going to be. It's going to be in the Iron Desert. Right. And. At dawn. At dawn. It was going to be at the, <laughs> in the Iron Desert. Mm, so The Iron Desert. <laughs> so, basically, they, he has to get all the way across and go down there and tell them. He convinces her by saying, you know, the woman's name is Alyssa. 
and I'm with the king, you know. Yeah. Um, she's like, what? No way. And then they talk about the prophecy, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's like, if you want the prophecy to come true, we have to do this. You need to save a young girl's right. life. Because they have the same name, like the old name and new name. Right, yeah. right. Well, and, and also... Martha! Yeah. <laughs> and also, in uh, this whole time, they, they've kind of alluded to the Beast and uh, Lissa yeah. inside the Beast's um, Black Fortress, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is weird. And we've had scenes already, like, they're kind of mixed in before this. Yeah. Uh, some scenes of her in the Black Fortress. Yeah, with the White Slayers. Right. And then, like, she walks through that one corridor that's, like, two giant white balloons. Like, yeah. You can't, like, where's, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, it <laughs> but looks. But there's some, aesthetically, like, yeah. the tower thing that she's in, like, from inside. It's, it's, like, cool it's, looking. Yeah, you know, there's also a, a, a hand that looks like a balcony, uh-huh. you know. Um, and then, of course, she sees him, which I like the that they, they kind of made it fucking weird to yeah. see him. It wasn't normal. It was yeah. like he was. He was like the size of Ant Man, but like being projected bigger. You know, <laughs> like man, he's gotta be pretty small. You know. Yeah, I never could. There was a couple times where I couldn't get the size. Like it's like when people used to draw the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Sometimes he's like seven foot tall, and sometimes he's like thirty. <laughs> yes. You know, like yeah, there's yeah. a lot of that in this where I'm like, what? How big is this dude? Yeah. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And then he assumes the form of Colwyn, too. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I could be anybody. You mm-hmm. want me to, baby. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and that's a cool part because that's when they stopped and have dinner. Mm-hmm. And um, one of this is when we find out about um, Liam Neeson's many wives yes. across the road. And how it's justified because he's you know he's on the road all the time. Yeah, and how Liam Neeson can slap a horse and the horse be like, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's like after they get the horses, right? <laughs> yes. Well, no, 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 no. They already have their own horses at that oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're so it's like the second night or something like that. It's before they. Uh, it's after. It must be before whenever he goes to, the the white, uh, the the uh, the widow of the whale. Oh, okay. I think it was like the scene right before because okay. he's gone. Yeah. Because that's when he comes down from the mountain. He's like, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, we're having these, we're having these like little, I don't know, love spats. So what I thought was cool about that was like, you know, they're making food and eating and all that. And then we have um, the one, the beast basically taking the form of Colin. Mm-hmm. Um, with the princess, yeah, or queen, I guess. At this, she point. says there's no love in that form, right? And like, you know, she like eschews him away, like get away from me. And then he's like, "Well, let's see what your lover's doing." And come to find out, the girl that we had just learned that Liam Neeson's wife had taken in because her her whole village was burned down, yes, was really some demon whore. And she's like trying to get with him. Don't and, judge and, him and, and, <laughs> a little bit. She's trying to get with him and. Um, you know, he's like, and they're watching it. They're watching it on the holograph screen. That they, he's basically you know, telling her, um, like it's your love is. He's um, he's gonna cheat on you. Yeah. He he can't. He can. He's gonna do whatever the fuck he wants to. And she's like, no, he's not. Well, he says something like, "Love is fleeting and power mm-hmm. is eternal" or something like that. Yeah, and he's like, those pff, pff, words. whatever. So he turns down the blonde lady. Yeah, know? yeah, and then she gets the claw. Yeah, <laughs> she she's like this. It's the claw. <laughs> this hand was only like seconds away from tearing your throat, but in the only, in the hour that I knew you, I loved you. Yeah, and then the beast is like, fuck. <laughs> bitch <laughs> and he fucking pulls the fucking the the brain scan on her it's like ah! yeah. <laughs> you know she fucking dies and they're yeah. like holy shit right so yeah yeah <laughs> so he, she knows yeah she's rebuffing you know yeah his, his advances and uh you know getting proven right by her one love right you know so, so that strengthens her, I'm sure, even more. You right, know, the right. Of the adversity of being inside a giant eye sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm like, is that his head? Is he, or is she inside the beast? It's just a big giant chasm. Yeah, I know, but it looks like an eyeball, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, that's the penthouse suite. Yeah, yeah. Gotta be, right? Yeah, Next to think. the auditorium. Right. right? <laughs> Where he hangs out, right? <laughs> And says his shit, you know. Yeah, I'm the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Lion face. <laughs> <laughs> Lima face. 
Yeah. <laughs> but it's the bees doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so their next trip that they got to take, right? It's to the Iron Desert. They got to go to the Iron Desert, but, but it's a long way away. It's ten thousand leagues away. Yeah, that's a lot of leagues. That's a lot of leagues. What could do that in a day, Brock? Fire mares. That's duh. Why didn't I think of that? That's badass. <laughs> Giant Clydesdale Dale horses that can fucking fly on. They run on fire through the air. Fire hooves. Yes, fire hooves. <laughs> Those fucking horses I call you are fire massive. hooves. <laughs> you are fire hooves. <laughs> the hoovenins. <laughs> but those fucking horses are huge yeah, as shit. Yeah, they are. They wrangle them. They're cowboys, too. Except mm-hmm. Liam Neeson just hugs his. <laughs> He's just like, ah. He does. It's, he it's just Clydesdale. Yeah. Neck. And it's I'm a like, Clydesdale. <laughs> he just grabs the thing. He's like, you better submit, bitch. And the whip guys, that's when they finally came into play because they were behind him, herding <laughs> yeah. them in. Whoop, whoop, whoop. They live just for that shit. That was their moment, dude. <laughs> that was their moment. So, so of course, um, Rel, the Cyclops, he can't leave. He's like, nah, I'm not going to go with you. And he's like, it's your your time? And he's like, yep. yep. Hey, man, shit, you were the best part. <laughs> you know? He's like, all right, I get he's it. He's the sloth of this movie. Yeah, yeah he is. <laughs> <laughs> but when he's it, smarter. <laughs> you, you know that meme? Or at least can communicate better. Yeah, you, well, you know the meme of the um, uh, Robert Redford, wherever Robert Redford's got the beard and he looks back and kind of gives a little nod? Mm-hmm. There's a real moment just like that. Whenever he comes into the swamp and he throws the fucking trident the first time, he looks over at, at Ergo yep. and he's like, <laughs> he gives a, a lot nod. of those little yes within this movie yes yeah. I wish I could find that meme but I <laughs> they don't they didn't make one or gif gif um so they See, basically you could make one I I could you've had the technology all along Brock oh no way <laughs> <laughs> so basically they get on these fucking horses and they start running but they're enjoying it it's like a train. <laughs> <laughs> And Liam Neeson's like, yay, if he's going to die, why doesn't he come with us? And he's like, no, he can't do that. Yeah. So. Good thing he doesn't. They have to get there before sundown. Yeah. Or the again at dawn. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They disappear. They, they basically got to get down. I thought it was dawn, right? Yeah. 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 yeah that's right. That's right. Yeah. But it looks like, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. So they get pinned down, right? The Slayers are shooting at them from, you know, turret holes around the whole deal. But guess who comes up to save him? Rel. That's right. He comes up again, man. And he even takes a couple of fucking laser magic beams to doesn't, the chest. Doesn't even stop him. He's like, bitch. He's like Cameron Poe. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Like Cameron Poe takes a fucking bullet to the arm and he ain't fucking stopping. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's absolutely. what Rel does. Absolutely. Rel's like. <laughs> and gets in there. But then the doors start to close because the light's coming up. Yeah. And he's trapped in there. But he lets everybody in. Everybody's totally cool. And they're like, come on, Rel. And he's like, no. <laughs> and then he's whoosh. But no guts. No guts. So he lived. <laughs> is he that, did. Is that he your did. head cannon? He did. Yeah. He, he lived. I feel like uh, he's a pancake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. I don't know why he waited. <laughs> I think it's grooved. So all the guts go down the middle. Ah. Yeah. That's yeah. just good design. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it thanks, is. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, blood makes the grass go green. Mm, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Play along, kids at home. <laughs> so, so Liam Neeson gets killed soon soon after because Robbie Coltrane gets killed out on the mountain. Yes, um, Liam Neeson gets killed by one of the Slayers that pops out of nowhere, like oh. Yeah. And uh, Home Dude does that danger roll. Torque does. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, fucking pretty badass. He's well, like, Sayat, <sighs> jump. <laughs> like he yells and then he jumps <laughs> and he gets fast. Right. So, basically, they're they're getting split up they go into that one chamber where the floor opens up and it swallows titch and ergo yes but yeah he goes down there and the dudes with the whips come in handy again yeah, yeah. you know because they got rope or something whatever whatever the whip is right and colwyn almost gets killed he's all the way in there but yet he doesn't just let go right right <laughs> he's like ah fuck it i'm going back up <laughs> uh, and i think i read somewhere that 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 really freaked out the head dude. Oh, really? Yeah. And the Colwyn guy, and it like fucked him up for a long time because wow. he almost got squished. He was that like wow. he was that fucked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
he he eventually finds Lissa, right? And, and the he, other three are in the spike room, right? Yeah, they go in. They go one way, and he's like, "I got this." So he pulls out the clave, and it starts fucking cutting a zigzaggy hole. Yeah, yeah. Into the yeah, uh, makes auditorium, no, not efficient at all. No. <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, he just doesn't go in a straight fucking line. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're like doing X and then go through it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it finally fucking works, and he jumps in there and he grabs her right, and then the beast fucking comes after him. But at the same time, the beast is going after him. It's smooshing the shit. Ergo's all fucked up because he became a, a damn tiger. Yeah, and he killed some slayers with them claws. Though. Right, right. After he he'd been a a, a goose. Um. <laughs> Beagle? Yeah, a beagle mm-hmm. for the kid because he grants yeah. the kid the wish. Yeah, yeah. And they're all like, man, you are a good guy. <laughs> he's like, come on, I still think it was foolish. <laughs> and then fucking, then he's a lion. No, or a tiger. tiger. Yeah. yeah. And he fucking... Dude, I he kicks ass. Why wouldn't you do that all the time? I know, right? Like, <sighs> bad guys? Cool. You're Beast Boy. Be a hawk. <laughs> <laughs> or that one wonder I, twin. Eyes of the hawk. <laughs> Eyes of the hawk, 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 hawk. <laughs> strength of the bear, speed of the puma, <laughs> brave star, <laughs> <laughs> guts of a <laughs> ferret, <laughs> stomachs of a cow. <laughs> Where you know ferrets have to shit like every thirty minutes. Oh, really? So that would be yeah, brave star's go. power. <laughs> He's like <laughs> bowels of a ferret. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> gross. That's why everything was brown there. <laughs> brown star. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, wow. yeah. yeah. So sorry, he, sorry, everybody. <laughs> he has to he has to go take on the beast, right? Because yeah. and then he he pulls out the glaive. Um, he's almost getting his ass kicked, right? Yeah, yeah. But he, then he throws it, and the thing fucking like is like <laughs> spins in place. Yeah. And then it it then hits he, the beast. Yeah, it almost seems like he controls it with his hand, with sort his of. mind. Yeah, but it's that like that's like the extension of his mind, like controlling yes. it a lot. Yes. Um, yeah, and he sticks it right in him, and down he goes. That was it. Mm-hmm. The big bad went down that fast, <laughs> or did he? Or did he? <laughs> Which is fucked up. So. He's like, no, I can't fucking get this shit anymore. Because <laughs> uh, he, he tries to force reach it. You know? yeah, he yeah. tries to get it. And it's like, nah, I'm not coming I out. I tried twice. Yeah, fuck it. I'm, <laughs> it. I'm not going to walk over there. <laughs> Jeez. You know what I mean? I'm going to stand I, right here. I did stick my hand in sort of lava. Yeah. Before, you know? <laughs> Fuck it. I tried twice. I'll get another like one. Like, you tried the Hal Jordan the fuck out of that and couldn't get it out of there. <laughs> no, it's like they're replaceable. It's like, yeah. it's a butterfly knife. Fuck it. I could buy one of those at the county fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, where's my comb knife? It's like, <laughs> Coleman. Yeah. Hey, I bought this knife that's three knives and they <laughs> pop out and they make no sense because if I try to throw it, I'll cut my hand. <laughs> awesome. Yay. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> so, so they got to fight their way out of the fucking place now. Yes, and they end up. She's like, "Well, what well, he tells her, I don't know how to fight because anybody. I don't have the glaive. I don't have the glaive." She's like, "You don't need it." And then she takes the fire from her, her hand and gives it to him. And guess That's what? Right. And now he's Johnny Storm. Yes, he, he can, can shoot, shoot fucking fire flames. Out yes, of his hand. <laughs> he just thinks it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> Bowels of a ferret. You got the touch. <laughs> he fucking really does. And so he had the power all along. Yeah, yeah. If he would but not if have... he would have s- just taken the fire when she told him to. Yep. Like, exactly. just complete the ceremony. I've never understood that. In any movie, comic book, story, anything. Why do they give away the tell at the very beginning? Not just that, but like, the ceremony was like five more seconds. Finish the ceremony. Well, like they they could have lived. There was people being shot around them, but they, not even around them. They weren't even in the room yet. Maybe it wasn't the feeling. And then he would have had the fire. Yeah, it was just the feeling. And wasn't then he there. would have just kicked all their asses. <laughs> yeah, he didn't need the glaive. <laughs> he could have fucking burned him from a long ways away. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to escape, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get out, and the fucking ship's like breaking up and yeah. going back into space in a weird yeah, fucking yeah. way. And the sure. slayers are all dying. Everything they end up like three miles away from it when it finally disintegrates, and they're like, <sighs> "Well, and they finish off the big fight. There was yeah. a big fight we didn't really talk about with the because we we just talked about when he threw it the one time and he went down. Mm-hmm. 
But then he had the one where he was shooting the flame and mm. all that. Yeah, so they yeah, were. Yeah. They got into another. Yeah, there's another scuffle in there. Another tussle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a, a more dramatic than the um, one shot, one kill. Yeah, <laughs> which was that was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh. Very anticlimactic. Yeah. It's good they got into another fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not dead yet. No. <laughs> but well, Friday the 13th was already out. Come on. Right. right. <laughs> that was that was fucking cruel. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, and I'm gonna uh And then they finish it actually they finish it out with the fable, the prophecy or whatever they talk about that again. Yes. That Colwyn and Lissa are the rulers of the world yeah. or earth or whatever they're at. Whatever they're called. Yeah. And then they are the, uh, their son will be the ruler of the galaxy, the galaxy. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. That's crawl. That's crawl. <laughs> the glaive. That's the glaive. Do you think, well, where did they come up with the name glaive too? That's a, that's a weapon Is from it? back in like medieval times. That star? No. Okay, cool. No. Um, <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it's one of those weird boomerangs with knives on it. That's probably where the impetus of the whole fucking thing came from. They're like, oh, man, wouldn't Just it be cool to see like a boomerang with knives on it? Yeah, I saw that movie. It was called Road Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> that's not That's not the glaive. Yeah, it is. Well, that's a real one. That's what a real glaive looks like. It's like a knife sword. It's like a staff knife sword. It's <laughs> an, anime style. Look it up, people. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, and offensive and defensive. Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. <laughs> and, you know. Not a boomerang <laughs> knife. Star five pointed <laughs> something ninjas ninjas, <laughs> but it returns back to. You know. I, I know we're making fun, but this movie was actually fun to watch. Yeah, I watched it, always. Yeah, like it, it was a good time. Um, I, I thought, like like I said, there were a lot of things that were done well. I yeah. I loved it and just it was so original, but yet. Say that, but yet it's a. But it hits all the yes. like genre kind of stuff as well. Yeah. But it's a, still original. Yeah, you, know? you, yeah. you. It's a. It's it's the ensemble. You know, it's the 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 fellowship. It's the king. You know, it's the big bad. You know, it's space. Yeah. We don't even know if they fucking uh, apparently the whatever is causing the beast to go into space is technology somehow, right? Or is it? Yeah. What about them? Maybe it's just magic. Right. Well, I mean, god dang, right? Or is magic really just a different form of technology? Oh, maybe. Mm. <laughs> well, see, now they're, if he was the king uh-huh. and she was the queen and they defeated the beast, the beast is not there, so he doesn't rule over any other worlds. They rule over all that shit. They, they rule over their world. Their world, Kroll. So here's what happens in my head canon, right? Is that when their son is born, right? There's more emissary to other worlds at this time because the beast was defeated. He and then they him. find out that it was them that defeated him. He ends up uniting them as oh, the son. You know that what makes I mean? sense. Yeah, yeah. It does. And then come to find out he's really a Sith Lord. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, no. no. It's Darth Vader. <laughs> That's where he came from. It's Darth Kroll. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Krollinator. <laughs> no, Darth Corwin Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Junior, Darth Junior. He's like, hey, Darth Junior, come here. <laughs> Darth Junior. <laughs> It'd be like, Dad, you suck. Can I change my name? Somehow, when you said Darth Junior, what popped in my head was Arnold Schwarzenegger from the movie Junior, like a pregnant <laughs> Sith Lord. It's a pregnant Sith Lord giving birth to a Sith baby. Uh-huh. That'll be the Messiah. It'll be like the Anakin Skywalker for the Sith. Or like, so he's gonna switch over to the light side, yeah. and then he'll come back and help you at the end. But he won't because he's also from the dark side. You don't know what he's gonna do. He's a wild man. <laughs> they get ended like Dune, where the main dude or one of the main guys actually becomes part of a worm. 
Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Why not? The Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> but that we were talking about Kroll and I what would you say? Well you would what would you rate this movie? And I know this has a lot more um you know, uh, nostalgia for you. Oh, I put this up there, man. Um, overall, just I would it's easy for me to put a nine or a ten on it. Okay. But to factor in everything on it, I would have to say an eight in overall everything. It wasn't as good as it needed to be to hit a 10, but yet for me, it really ranks up there because it is something that you can just jump into and it's enjoyable, just like fucking Star Wars was, you know? Sure. Star Wars, you didn't need to know the background of how they got their fucking powers and shit, but their special effects were really cool. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, especially for that time right? yes yes um I, you know i'm not far off i would give it a seven yeah um because it was enjoyable um it wasn't i wasn't mad i spent two hours watching it because it was about a two-hour movie yeah, yeah. um so yeah I, I enjoyed it enough to watch it a second time before the show you know what i mean like i watched it Two days in a row. Yeah, yeah. Do you think uh, there was any kind of drag spots in it? Because I don't remember really that many. Not really. No, it moves right along. Yeah, the beast ones maybe, but even the uh, the journey ones where he's climbing and stuff <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, where he fights the mountain yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, you know, absolutely. When he's climbing up the mountain and the rocks come down, he's like the mountain's taking him on. Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> he's like, oh, dodge, 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 <laughs> and like he fights the fucking mountain, and the mountain is so weak, it's like fuck it. <laughs> He got me. He made it through he the got rocks. Me king guy. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see that part, I'm like, oh, here he comes to fight the mountain. My favorite's when the um, when the cave ins happening at the end, and the rocks fall, and then they bounce. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, those are nice styrofoam rocks. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I, I I read somewhere that the uh, the the quicksand was just like shredded cork. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks weird, yeah. you know. It and and it's quicksand, but yet the fucking the seer is like, it's the beast. He's playing with us. I'm like, what? <laughs> fucking that's just quicksand, dipshit. Right, right. <laughs> but no, no. <laughs> Apparently, the beast fucking took over the land and like was yeah throwing Come shit to up. Find out. Yeah. yeah, which I I like. Just imagine, you like, know, it's almost like he corrupts everything right yeah yeah and what's really cool is they take and take and take and take from everything around us like how are we going to put this together how do we make it work right well let's make them fucking fly on horses <laughs> you know what i mean it's like how are they going to get there well they don't have spaceships horses well and you think about that too for the time for the special effects they had that was probably perfect. Yeah. All I had to do was put some flame trail underneath them. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was rotoscoped. Yeah. I mean, even the um, like the the jewel spinning, all the effects looked really decent. They looked a lot better than Clash of the Titans. Oh, for sure. You know, they looked. Uh, there wasn't anything that I looked at and was like, mm, that's really shitty. Yeah. Uh, except for the, maybe the beast distortion. Yeah. But that was an artistic. Yeah, that was kind that of was a, a, yeah. Uh, that wasn't a necessity thing, I guess. I mean, it might have been. Might have had a big giant hole in his butt or something like that. <laughs> it, got a hole in me, bum. <laughs> I got a hole. I don't even have one arm left. <laughs> you guys didn't finish the costume. Ah, fuck it. We'll fix it in post. Just put it in shade. And... <laughs> yes. Don't use that arm. Uh, yeah. You're don't never, use only it. Only using one arm. Use the whole thing. <laughs> I I love the movie. I I wish there was more movies like this. Yeah. I would say check this movie out. Let us know what you think. Um, and while, you know, if you want to do, you can also hit up Iris, Ice Pirates, which is, I would put it kind of in the same vein of movie. Way different. Way different movie. Same director. Um, check the, both those out. You can check that one out in the archives. Um, and then watch that movie. Let us know what you think. And where can they do that, Brock? At dropculture.com. Yeah. And dropculturepodcast at gmail.com. YouTube at dropculture. Everywhere, drop culture. That's right. All the socials. Everything. Yeah. And with that. Later, dudes. Peace. Roll.
looks. I mean, come on. What a fucking badass movie. I'm going to tell you right now, if I give a movie from 1983 a 7, <laughs> it's, really, it's, it's so fucking good, though, man. Yeah, it is.